Hey, it's your pal Mike Shea from Sly Flares here with the Lazy DM Prep Show. Uh, in this show, we go through steps from Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master while preparing for my Sunday D&D game. In this case, I am running the D&D hardcover adventure Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. This show is brought to you by the patrons of Sly Flourish. If you want to help me support, if you want to help support this show, help me put on shows like this, you can do so by, com- by becoming a patron of Sly Flourish by going to patreon.com slash Sly Flourish and signing up. I also want to mention that my, I have a Kickstarter launching in 10 days for the Lazy DMs Companion. You can see the cover right over there. And if you want to learn more about this Kickstarter and also download a free 18-page preview of the book, you can do so. You can learn about it by click going to the Kickstarter page, which is down in the show notes below, and clicking on Notify Me on Launch. During this show on Twitch, I am hoping to reach 2,000 followers. That would be awesome. We are currently at 1996. Only four more followers. That's all we need. Four more people to click on Notify Me on Launch to be notified. And then we'll have hit a round number. We like round numbers here. So where did things go last week? If you recall, I had a I had kind of a weak reprieve because I uh, was all prepared to run a game and then we didn't have enough people show up. And so we canceled the game for that week, which meant I had a whole other week to kind of prep things. And I did so mostly by filling out the uh, point crawl map for Grimskull Island. All right, this is my Grimskull Island card. As always, I'm using Notion to I am using Notion to do my campaign prep and in my Notion template uh, notes for all that stuff is down below as well. In my Notion template, uh, I have cards for things like locations. And so here we have a picture of Grimskull and then I have my code for the Grimskull point crawl. And this is what the point crawl looks like. It starts off at the frost giant docks and then there's many different paths that the characters can take, including hitting hidden paths and everything else in order to eventually get to Grimskull for the Grimskull fortress itself. So I had extra time, so I was able to build all this out. I was able to build out this map, think about the secret paths, think, you know, add some stuff. I had these locations, and as you can see for, like, each of the locations, I sort of have, like, you know, a few lines of stuff in here. These big lines are actually just me copying and pasting treasure in here. So you can see that I've got, like, things going on in each of these. Now, something one of my friends mentioned in Discord was that they had built a point crawl map and the characters went one way and they felt bad because they didn't go the other way and they had stuff prepped for the other way. And that is certainly something that happens. In a point crawl map, one of the things is you never expect that they're going to hit everything. Like they might hit four of these. Look, look at all these locations I got, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I got 11 places, but it's very likely they're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? They may hit six of 11. They might hit half of them. Right. And that's okay because I didn't really do a lot of prep for each of these locations. I don't really know what's there. I really only have to think about what are the places they're certainly going to go to. Right. And I'm really going to spend most of my time in the one I know they're going to go to, which is the Frost Giant Tombs. That's what we're going to spend a lot of time talking about today. But then I'll probably think a little bit about like, I know that these two places, they'll probably go to one of these two places. They might go to, you know, there's so many different routes they can take. So somebody asked what tool I used. I used a website called graphviz.it. And graphviz lets you build a graph uh, online. And you can see my syntax uh, here in this this little window of, you know, you do graph G with a squiggly. You have to go look up the format and everything like that. But basically it can build this. You can build nice circles around them. You can actually highlight them. You can put names of the what the what are the pathways, the icy switchback, hidden tunnels, underground rivers, icy paths, game game paths. And then I can do dotted lines to show what are hidden paths, like paths that they might only discover with uh, uh, high perception checks. But in the reality, in my game, they're going to see them all because they have very high high perception high perception. So last week, the characters went to the docks. They got attacked by two giant dire sharks. Uh, the sharks were very dangerous. They hurt people badly. There was a lot of confusion among the characters of whether they should dive into the water to fight them or whether they should leave the water. Hey, we hit 2,000. Sorry, small celebration time. Yay, look at that. 2,000 followers for the Lazy DM Companion. Thank you guys very much. We hit a round number. That is awesome. I can't wait for this Kickstarter. I can't I can't wait for the Kickstarter. I'm very nervous. It's very, you know, running a Kickstarter is a very nerve wracking experience. And I can't wait till the campaign is underway. And I can't wait, of course, to get the book in your hands. I can't wait for you guys to see the sample, right? And, and explore the sample. If you're a patron, you've seen the sample, hopefully. But soon everybody will have the sample. And I'm excited for that. And then, I'm, of course, I'm mostly excited for you guys to have the book in your hand and for you guys to use it and for all of us to enjoy it. So, yeah. Oh, 2001. 
a space odyssey look at that thank you so much anyway back to back to the game back to the show so so they went to the frost giant docks they fought the dire sharks and when you start with a fight like that it, it you know it takes a while so like it was the first hour of the game was just fighting the sharks but they did meet the orlo or so sopo right sopo is this fur hat wearing imp thing and i played the app and, and i talked about npcs sopo is played by eb farnham in deadwood who kind of works for oral they know they kind of work for oral they this is sopo sopo is kind of leading the characters into trouble but then like oh i didn't know i didn't know there was like 50 ghouls in that ship <clears throat> so they met sopo sopo kind of explained things going on in the you know and the characters saw, oh, I, I, they saw that there's an icy switchback cave that leads up into what is like a big collapsed, you know, there was a big avalanche and there's now caves that have carved through the avalanche and those caves go through the Yeti caves. They decided, let's go after uh, the Shadow Storm. So they, they took the icy, they, they went across the icy cliffs to Shadow Storm. And there they found that the, there was one dead ghoul on the front of the ship, one ghoul on the ship. But there's actually dozens of ghouls inside the ship. And as soon as they got to the ship, the ghouls started pouring out and they're just hacking through ghouls. And I think they fought about 25 ghouls and they did a turn undead and, you know, a, a, you know, three quarters of the ghouls are destroyed by turn undead. They've fought the other ghouls, slew them, then found a vault inside Shadow Storm that contained a great deal of treasure. Uh, they acquired that treasure. And then they said, okay, and now they see that there's a big cave that's cutting through the cliffs that's going inside. And that cave is going to lead to the frost giant tomb. So that is where the game starts, but that that's where the, this game is headed. So we start off uh, today's prep by generating a session planning template. Today is the 18th. Title our thing, and let's start by taking a look at the taking a look at the characters. So we have four, uh, six characters today, but I think I uh, know at least one person is out. So we have Ilda. Uh, Ilda is a half elf, half Goliath, who may be uh, the offspring of either Thrun or the Frost Maiden or nobody in particular at all. Her she shares a father with Auk and Dawncaller and has been brought into the worm doom crag goliaths so she feels like she has a real family that that said she's still kind of patching things up with her mother her mother is realized like you can be anybody you want to be regardless of the fact that your father thinks you are the avatar of an elder evil auk and dawn caller is a member of the worm doom crag goliaths and has seen visions of things under the ice he is he knows somehow thrun and yethrin has reached to him i have this idea like maybe he has sort of sorry connection to thrun Gorwan Alcazar is a uh, secret member of the Greycastle family, and he is running a uh, merchant caravan inside there. He's done some kind of shady stuff to get rid of his competition, but he's here to help Icewind Dale. He can't make money if Icewind Dale freezes over, so he's here to help. Uh, Perrin Fat Rabbit is a conspiracy theory, conspiracy theorist, halfling ranger who has been, was, was captured by mind flayers and catched and released by mind flayers with only, he's got some like weird networking stuff in him that the mind flayers put in there, but they didn't get a symbiote in his head. Unlike Shadowhawk, who is half mind flayer now. And then we have Candle in the Dark, who is a former rogue who used to work for the Xanathar, uh, recently murdered an assassin, and then murder, he defended himself of, uh, kind of murdered like he went into their house and killed him recently got rid of an assassin who had been hunting him down known as shakar ballard and shakar's caller who was named guy gaz Greenhood. so they are slain so now candle and his family appears to be safe in icewind dale for the most part but they're still dealing with the frostman stuff so those are the characters for today's game i don't know if there's any major character hooks that i can tap into but when we get into secrets and clues you never know what comes through uh, looking at the characters and generating secrets and clues from character backgrounds is a great way to bring in to bring in secrets and clues. So they are at the icy caves leading into the frost giant tomb. Uh, I want to have a strong start. I don't want to throw a fight at them because I don't want to take another hour before they get into the place. They have Sopo. Sopo's with them. What we could have a like a a snow vortex, and somebody sees Oral maybe a flyby uh, so i think i don't know if i have it in my npcs let's take a look hey look orcus has become an npc i wonder how that happened iskra i need a picture of a DD rock oh there's a good one i'll use that cool black and white guy so oral has a pet rock a rock is like a massive massive eagle i think if we look at this picture yeah it's holding a cow like see the adventurers there 
you know, and then you see how big this thing is. It is a huge eagle. It's actually not the most sinister. That's like a nice picture. I want like a sinister looking rock. There's one that's got crab claws. I don't know about that. I don't see a great picture of a rock, unfortunately. Oh, how about this guy? Why don't we use that? Oh, come on. I can't open that image. There we go. So I got a new new picture of the rock there. Perfect. So I think, and what's the rock's name? I'm never going to remember the stupid name. Iskra. So I think Iskra is going to fly by, right? There's, they're going to see, they're going to hear the screech. They're going to see this massive snowstorm. I think Sopo is going to freak out and there's going to be this huge wind and I'll probably have everybody sort of roll checks or get knocked prone. I'm not like, I don't think it's going to be a big deal, uh, a, a big deal for them. Snow vortex, Iskra, fly by. And Iskra is not going to attack them. Iskra's just going to fly by. There's going to be huge wind. DC, I think it's going to be a big win. DC 18 decks or get thrown around, right? And and then one of the characters through the mist is going to see the towering, the towering form of Oral. I want them to know that Oral is really here. Like they keep kind of hearing about Oral, but they're going to see this picture of Oral, right? And, and I think this is the form. This is the form that's here in the island. I think that there are other forms, uh, but this is the form that is that is here in the island. So I think that is a good, strong start. And then the scenes are through the ice caves into the giant tombs. I think that that will be cool. I think for the... so. So they get through the giant tombs, then and then there's let's take let's take a look at our point crawl, right? So first of all, the whole thing is across. Whoops, what am I doing? Traveling across Grimskull Island. So then the potential paths that they might take, they're 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 certainly going because they said they were going there. They're certainly going here. So then the next paths are either the Yeti Caves or Dragon Bones, right? So we could put that on our list. Whoops. And then kind of after that, we don't, we don't really know, right? I can't, I can't really say, you know, they're either going to the Yeti Caves or Dragon Bones, and then they may go to any of these other locations, any, they're like, you know, they could really go to any one of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different possible places. So I'm going to, I'm not going to fill out eight places. The only one I'm really going to worry about is the Frost Giant Tombs. Yeti Caves, I, you know, I'm going to improvise. Maybe we'll spend a little bit of time, depending on what time looks like today, putting a couple more bullet points down for what some features that they might find in these locations. But generally, I don't think I'm going to, I don't, I don't think, I'm, oh, Jesus, I'm not, no, just almost dumped a full cup of coffee. I don't think we're going to put a whole lot of stuff there, but that is generally, those, those, those two places I can probably fill out a little bit more. It's one of these resolutions, right? The more likely they are to go to a place, the more time we should spend thinking about it. And then the less likely, the less time we spend. So those are the scenes. So what is Secret Series? Oral is here on Grimskull. Island. Oral is aware of the characters. This is gonna be easy today. Oral has a pet rock named Iskra. It's huge and deadly and smart. It is, what's the name of the dragon? I always forget the dragons. Avantaris, A-R-V, fears it, as does Angajuk. Let's see, Frost Giants, a, a, a sect, uh, a sect of Frost Giants has worshipped, worshipped Oral 2,000 years ago? How far back would that be? 2,000 years, right? Most Frost Giants, who do Frost Giants worship? Thrym. Most Frost Giants worship Thrym. Let's see if Thrym is in. Yeah, I don't really have a lot of information about Thrym. Pretty standard giant god. Man, there's so many ads on this page. Oh, off. Most guys uh, worship Thrym. Some worship Kodis G. Uh, a few, it appears, worshipped Oral. Grimskull was a fortress built for a frost giant queen. What was the frost giant queen's name? Vasavikin. Filled with the remnants of her reign. So there's a nice secret we can just steal right out of the book. Vasavik. The codicil of the white resides in a vault in the lowest reaches of Grimskull. Only the most devout can reach it. Grimskull 
contains the tests of Oral, the tests of the Frost Maiden. Only one who proves, only those, not the one, those who prove themselves. Is it worthy, willing to let go of their lives can make only those who prove themselves willing to let go of their former lives can, can, can progress in oral service. The tests change those who take them forever. The trials of winter. Yeah, we'll go with that. That's better. You're right. Where, where is that? Where do I got that? Tests, the trials of winter. Those are pretty good. Any other, what other secrets that are, you know, these are things that they could learn while they're wandering around Grimskull Isle. Many of the frost druids who came to Grimskull became, found themselves unworthy. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Look at that. I got my 10 secrets. That's pretty good. So fantastic locations. We've got Grimskull Island. Hey, look at that. It's even fast. NPCs. We've got uh, Sop Sopo. We have uh, Iskra is certainly not an NPC. Any other? So I was going to have... And we can take a look. I think I'm going to cheat a little bit and look at last week's notes because I bet you I had good stuff for last week's notes I can harvest for this week. I know I said throw old notes away. You, now you can see that I don't always follow my own advice. Mostly secrets, but I already got my 10 secrets, right? So I'll only go back and see if my 10 secrets... Hey, there's those frost giants. If there's anything in there that I really wanted. Grim Skull was built thousands of years ago. Da, da, da. Codicil, the wise collection of ancient magic. Yeah, yeah. Codicil, the channel of energy. Thrun. That's a good secret. I'm going to steal that secret again. I'm moving that one forward. That was important. I didn't forget it exactly, and it certainly would come back, but it's something that could come up. Spell must be countered for, to end the endless night, but its source of power must also be severed. That's a good, important one. We'll move that there, too. Look at me with my unmanageable amount of secrets. Got that. Our garden of ice sculptures, I'm not going to bother. Travels across some giant rock, I'm not going to bother. Icy tunnels, layers of ancient dead, not bother. Frost rounds, are all comes to go. Yep. Iskra guards the path, yep. Trials of the frost break, those who take from humanity. They stripped to test of the connection of the former lives. The hardest answer is always the right one. That's a good That's a good secret. I'm going to replace the one. I'm going to re replace this guy. That was better. Melsoon Halfcaster. Who was that? Oh, the Oni. Yeah. So this, right. This is the one I wanted to remember. There is an Oni signed Halfcaster who has been trapped on this island by by Oral and is trying to seek it, seek escape. That would be a fun there could be a frost giant ghost, probably not down here. These would be the heroes, right? So in particular, and I guess we'll, well, let's see. Let's let's finish our prep real quick here. And then I can go and fill parts of it out. So what are we going to have? Frost giant skeletons, uh, yetis, abominable yeti, oni, any other rock, oral, and which form is it? Oh, this is a pain in the ass. Second form. So her second form, she can actually walk around, right? So her second form could be walking around. Her second form is vulnerable to fire. Any other... So then, then I guess some sort of random... The owl form is first, but the owl form, I think, is the one that's wandering around Icewind Dale itself. And then the other one is in the heart of the other one. And then what I'm going to have... I think I think my plan is that they may run into a single form and then face it and it may even defeat it, but not really. And then when they face Oral for real, it's all three forms. And maybe it's all three forms at the same time. But it's certainly all three forms in sequence. I'm going to do like waves of combat for all three forms. So they'll face each one. And they'll hopefully have some experience with how each one is dealt with. And other creatures will come in as they go. So I think that is solid there. And then treasure, I think I've got... So I guess some interesting treasure that they could find in the frost giant in the frost giant tomb would be kind of interesting. Is there anybody, I know, I know I want to drop something on the source of reason here today. I don't know. I think we'll kind of go random. They just got a big pile of treasure. A bag of beans is kind of cool. Let's look at bag of beans. A bag of beans are fun, right? You don't know what it's going to do. Yeah. I think we're definitely gonna have a bag of beans. Those are fun. We could do another frost giant rune. That would be pretty great. Is the bag of beans game altering? How does how would a bag of beans be 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 game altering? Toadstools, geyser, Trent, stone statue. What's the worst thing that can happen? Oh, a giant beanstalk sprouts growing to the height of a GM's choice. Top leads where the GM chooses. Oh, that'd be very cool. 
pyramid with a mummy lord. Very cool. The AD&D bag of beans was pages and pages of random roll tables. Might be fun to go back to that old one then. I think we'll have a bag of beans. Oh, we also have the uh, runes. I think they were, yeah, the different runes. Worm rune. Wow, this thing's crazy. Oh, it's a dra It's specifically to fight a dragon. That's kind of lame because there's not really a dragon that they're going to fight in this one. The Ild rune. Ignite resistance. Let's see. You could attach it to a weapon and the weapon could do extra flame damage. Or you could put it on armor and gain resistance to cold. I think an Eldrin might be fine of fun. We'll put that out there. You can find that in the giant. And there's probably other treasure. I think they just got a lot of other treasure. So, you know, suits of huge giant armor, effigy of, I guess, uh, yeah, the effigy is in the is in the thing itself. Yes, yeah, so that looks cool. Let's see. I can... I don't really use this stuff anymore because I, I use the encounter builder now. So let's take a look. We'll go to Grimskull Island and we're, we're going to, we're going to fill out a few other pieces here. So the tomb of the frost giant legionnaires. So what are three, what are three interesting things that they find here? Massive giant uh, sarcophagi frozen. I guess there's one sarcophagus, right? For the one like frost giant warlord frozen sentinels in the walls a uh, huge mammoth skull sort of rooftop right i think those are three kind of cool things and then they'll face the uh three frost giant skeletons that'll break free it'd be kind of interesting if the frost giant then like you know put his hand over his blade and it inflicted fire damage like whoa why is the frost giant doing fire damage so that could be that could be pretty cool the Yeti Caves are one other location they could be going to. Huge, rotted beast, right, that they've been devouring. What other interesting things? Bodies frozen in the ice. That's like they have, they have some that they, they, you know, throw up in the ice and they freeze them there and then they can thaw them out and eat them. Crude effigy of oral. I don't think we're going to put baby yetis in there. I don't want to, I don't want to chance a weird, you know, do we kill baby yetis? Do we try to train a baby yeti? So we've got that Jedi hanging from the, it'd be pretty funny. Like uh, two feet, disembodied feet hanging from the ceiling. That's funny. Yeti abomination. Maybe yeah, with, with a sword handle, a sword stuck nearby. Uh, could do like a, could do a magic short sword, right? That's kind of too too much if it was like a green glowing short sword. Although it was blue at the time, right? A moon touch short sword. Is that a thing? Moon blade. Legendary. Yikes. We're not doing that. No crazy legendary weapons right now. Let's use good old Lazy DM's workbook. And roll some dice. And come up with an interesting short sword sitting in there i think there's probably a couple of people like everybody can use a short sword page 14 has spell effects 13 and 14 are the pages i'm looking at right now so who made this uh weapon it was made by it's an unholy shorts oh it is uh rough a rough unholy short sword grim and it can cast what spell 16 Inflict wounds. That's pretty great, right? I love it when random tables do this. A pretty grim sword. So a plus one unholy, what is it? Rough unholy short sword? Short sword. That casts inflict wounds once per day. Yes, but not like this. So I think you have, the way this works is you have to, uh, you have to activate the ability when, when do you have to do it? You, you, you have to choose before you hit that you're going to use the ability, right? Otherwise, it gives you too many opportunities. You just wait until you hit and then you use it. So inflict the, the thing about inflict wounds, it's really good, but you have to hit, right? And so you want it to be a risky spell. So in this case, you have to, you have to decide. You have to declare the fact that you're going to use the ability before you hit. And then you hit and you get to do the extra inflict wounds on top of the attack. So it's, that'll be very good. It's And maybe it's like a little bit of a soul siphoner, right? Like it actually, I don't think it channels any health back to the wearer, but the, the blade 
kind of draws in the blade kind of draws it in yeah so does it have a name we need a cool name for this rough unholy short sword that's a good weapon death tu death touch is too much hell razor black razor yeah right ice blight jagged edge the render how about the render soul render that's that's a bit a bit much right soul flare schwab <laughs> Very nice. Cutty McCut face. Yeah. So that's cool. Fester. Oh, Fester's pretty good. I like Fester because it, it, you know, it doesn't, it's not like, it's just a, it's just a plus one short sword. Soul Render is like an artifact, like little thing. That I think Fester, Fester's a great one. In inventory full, you get a gold star for the day for a good name. Maggot. Awesome. Uncle, oh, Uncle Fester. Yeah. It means to rot. So we've got that. What is the other potential place that we could go? So the other one is dragons, the dragon bones, right? So dragon bones, uh, a zombie dragon might be there. Maybe, maybe not. We also, so massive dragon graveyard. So there's probably more than one dragon here. Dragon skull. What are those called? Uh, cold fire brazers. What other, like who put this here? Probably probably giants put this here. What else? I always like deep shafts, a deep shaft, right? Bones are surrounding this deep shaft. And there may or may not be a zombie dragon hanging out there. So that's good. The Garden of Sculptures. There's either ice trolls or abominable yeti. Beautiful, beautiful ice sculptures. And he, very tall. Probably... At the base of the ice sculptures are probably uh, gifts from the druids, including like a frozen hand, a child's what? A child's boot, other kind of grim gifts, you know, sacrifices that the druids have made. What else would they have sacrificed? Family portrait, statues resembling the characters. That's really cool. And I think if they screw with these, this is where they might face orals. Second form. I think it might be time. So that's cool. I think we got some fun. Um, I can't spell abominable. There we go. So that's fun. Got our dragon bones. What else do we need here? So sculptures, the druid circle, the effigy of the one below. So yeah, middle soon. Okay, so we already did that one. The effigy, cult fanatics of Thrun, effigy of Thrun. Yeah, decrepit ground, defiled ground, right? You could probably see, can probably see the beam of energy coming from the east, southeast, out of the glacier, out of the ragged glacier. You can probably see that. The hot springs, we have the boiled bones, discarded clothing. You want this to be as welcoming, tree of fruit, right? That's pretty good. I've got some extra encounters. If I'm doing the rock though, I probably don't. I really don't need this list. I'm, I'm, I doubt I'm going to use it. Let's kill two of these. Fragrant friendly awakened polar bear with the bloody maw. We'll get rid of the frost roots with winter wolves. I don't know. Yeah, we'll get rid of them. So there's my six potential encounters. If I, if I, th if I feel like I need an encounter, I can hit this list. I don't know that I'm going to need one. I did have the rock. You know what? I take it back because Iskra could definitely come and attack them. So I'll keep that handy in case I need something, but I don't know that I'm going to need an encounter for it. I don't know that that's like, so I think that that is good. I think, you know, I like, it's funny because I had two weeks of prep for all of Grimskull Isle. So I guess, yeah, let's go back and think more with the time we've got. Let's go back and think more about the trials, right? The trials are probably, and I've got this little section here. The trials are the the one piece of the Grimskull Fortress itself. This is me thinking ahead, you know, probably a, a week or two ahead, which is okay because I'm almost sure I'm going to get there. And it's one, one step that I don't want to have. So if we have all six characters, right? So let's let's try some a different angle on this. And we have Shadow. So Shadowhawk's trial will involve, like what what would Shadowhawk's trial be? Being dissected by the matron, the matrons of, what's the house of Lauren in Menzo, in order for, to give them a new weapon to use against the other houses. 
So somehow we'll twist that. I'm trying to think of like, what is a scenario that I can put each of the characters in depending on the trial? And then I'll cruelty, endurance, isolation, and preservation. Those are the types of trials. And I'll have to like improvise. I'll have to improvise how the situation results in those four things. So an example was like, if he's being dissected, well, cruelty is he has to withstand he has to withstand being disse- you know, dissected alive in order for them to draw out and, and bring a weapon. Same thing with endurance, right? Isolation will be sort of like the feeling that he is going to lose his connection to this and that he will be all alone again. Preservation, kind of the preservation, you know. In other words, like whatever choice the character makes as this is going on. So what's the choice he can make? Does he a- allow the dissection or does he strike back and the right answer will depend on one of those four questions right like he'll have to he'll have to do whichever one ties to those four questions ilda her trial whoops uh, her trial is about thrun will she a good one is she finds herself with the swords with the knights of the black sword back thousands of years ago before icewind dale froze she's guarding the sarcophagus she has to make a choice when she's guarding the sarcophagus of thrun and she has to make a choice does she continue her vigil under the supervision of the netherese does she leave her does she leave the order and abandon her charge? Does she stay and fight and die? So that's kind of a fun background thing. This is a bit of a subplot that I'm adding into the game is that in Yethrin, there is a sarcophagus to an elder evil named Thrun, a very, very powerful elder evil. Many thousands of years ago, the elves, when they were exploring the outer plains, touched upon a plane of pure darkness and malevolence, and an entity came forth called Thrun. They were never able to defeat Thrun, but they were able to entrap him and 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 encase him inside of a case it inside of a sarcophagus, huge sarcophagus. They then dedicated an order uh, of elves known as the Knights of the Black Sword to protect the sarcophagus uh, in the spine of the world very isolated from everywhere else. The Netherese, many hundreds of, maybe hundreds of years later, maybe a thousand years later, the order kept, you know, growing. The generations kept growing. The elves were very old and they were dying off. There weren't a lot of them. And the Netherese show up and they say, we want the sarcophagus and you have a choice. You can either, we're going to take it because we want to study it and we want to draw power out of it. You can come with us and continue your vigil watching over the sarcophagus while we're drawing power out of it. You can face us and we'll kill you or you can leave your order and and walk away and they have to choose. And I think the interesting thing is Ilda will find herself in that position as one of the knights and she'll have to choose which of those four she'll have, you know, and and depending upon the, depending on the choice, the choice that she makes will depend upon which one of those answers, cruelty, endurance, isolation, or preservation, you know, what, what question, what result leads to one of those, right? is the interesting part. Who else do we have? We have Gore. So Gore will find himself, what? He has to abandon his family. I don't know if I'm gonna get to all of them today. It's already 11, but I'll put everybody in here. Auken and Perrin and Candle. So some easy ones, I'm gonna do a couple of easy ones first. So Candle, for example, has a choice of sacrificing He's facing the Xanathar, has a choice of giving up himself or his family to the Beholder. Which does he choose? I think generally Oral is probably looking for, he, he, needs, to, he needs to choose his family. Perrin is probably facing his, his brother is becoming one of the connected mind flayers and he has to choose to let him be and let them become part of the collective or kill him. Auken Dawncaller. What would Gore and Auken are the two that two that remain, the two tests that remain. I think we'll hang on to those. Well no, I got a few minutes. So what test so Auken 
Auken is a he's a Goliath and he knows about Yethrin. And I think something about having to leave his family and leave his clan in order and be an outcast forever or bring the eye of Thrun upon them. That's kind of lame. I don't know. So Gore, uh, was Gore's sacrifice to leave his family name behind and watch his fall into shambles. I think it's something about him losing his business because that's what he's, he's about. I'm trying to think of like, what's the situation? I guess we, if we have these themes, cruelty, endurance, isolation, preservation, leaving the family name. How about we can bring uh, what's her name? Torga, right? Is dying in prison, is dying in Revel's End. And only Gore can give her her freedom. But to doing so ruins his business and his name. Will he let her die in isolation? Yeah, that's an interesting one. David David says, uh, has the everlasting rhyme affected the Goliaths in, an in, in a significant way? Could Auken's story be tied to that? I mean, you don't want it to be too easy. Like, does he have to sacrifice himself to save the clan? Well, of course he's going to do that. So it's got to be worse than that, right? It's like, it, it needs to be a hard, it needs to be a hard choice. But yeah, that idea, like what if he has to face his father, right, right? Faces his father who has become a uh, an acolyte of oral slay his father or let the ever let, let the let the rhyme take over his village and turn the Goliaths to servants of oral that's a good one I like that one so the idea is like what if he sees his father again right he sees his father again and his father is like I was killed and brought back. She saved me. And what she, she the, what she wants is what we want. And you, you know, the rhyme is going to take our people and many of them are going to die, but those that remain will become servants of oral if you follow me, right? And then he has to choose. So I got some stuff here. I, I like this idea. I, I really dig this idea. I want to spend more time with this, I think. I really like the idea of tying each of the trials to individual characters and the arcs of their character. I think that's a much stronger way of running these trials than the nonsense that's in the book itself. So I'm really happy with this. It's hard though, because you got to like really know the character. It's a good opportunity to really pull the character into the adventure and really tug on those characters' lines. Like with Gore, I still want to have something about the fact that like, you know, you know, that it's tied to the fact that he is actually a noble, a hidden noble here. So I don't know. I, I want to. I want to put some. You know, I want to put that in there. You shift the attention of the party to an individual. You do. Uh, it, it won't be bad though, because you're basically just describing the situation, and they make a choice. There's no like die rolling. There's no combat. There's no. You know, it's not a big scene. It's really just like a big, a big sort of question. I, I in the Thirteenth Age game we played just now. I played yesterday. We had that where each player had to describe it. So. It, they're quick. These are not long scenes, right? These are these are quick descriptions, and the player makes a choice, and then we determine whether or not that choice was hard enough. That Oral says, "Yeah, you're you're cold and hard," and like every druid does it, right? Every druid has to go there and face like their hardest, you know, face their hardest choice. I'll tell you a, a really a really easy way is you ask the player. Maybe this is like the lazy way, and maybe all the stuff I'm doing is nonsense. Which is like, you know, what situation? You know, what situation do you fear the most being in? Like what, you know, imagine for a minute the worst situation that you worry about, that your character worries about and the hard choice you're going to have to make. What is that situation? And then they, they write that down and they say, now, when you get here, you find yourself in that situation. What choice do you make? Right. Right. So, you know, I think that that might be the lazier way to do this. And and maybe I'll try that. Right. Like, you know, maybe I will I will talk to my players about doing that and then and then see what I get from that. And either I might change them or twist them a bit. I think that might be a better way to go. So he has to melt down as what to make the keys to unlock the locks. DC 12. <laughs> nice. DC 15. All locks are DC 15. All right. We have hit an hour. I want to thank everybody for hanging out with me today while I prepped for my slide, my, my game, my, my Rhyme of the Frostman game. I'm very excited for it. It's going to be a good time. I love playing D&D. So I want to thank you all for coming today. You can help me out. If you like this show and you enjoyed it, you can help me out four different ways. One, you can subscribe to the Sly Flourish newsletter. Two, you can subscribe to my videos on YouTube. Three, 
If you want to support me directly, you can become a patron of Sly Flourish. Go to patreon.com slash Sly Flourish and sign up. Notes are below. Uh, you get access to all kinds of cool stuff. And four, you can pick up any of my books, including Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master, Lazy Games Workbook, or any others. And or you can support my Kickstarter coming up in 10 days. Thank you all very much. Have a great day. Get out there and play some D&D.